Hello viewers. Princess Diana's $90,000 ring is worn by Meghan Markle as she accepts an anti-racism award. But before we continue, are you interested in starting or scaling a YouTube channel without having to show your face or becoming a traditional YouTuber to earn $30,000 a month? Click on the link below for more information. Meghan Markle wore Princess Diana's aquamarine ring as a homage to her late mother-in-law. Princess Diana initially ordered the ring in 1996 to swap out her engagement ring following her divorce from King Charles. Princess Diana wore the ring in 1997 as she participated in charitable activities for the Aid Crisis Trust, it is estimated to be worth $90,000, £74,122. Meghan wore the ring to the Ripple of Hope Gala in New York this evening where she and Prince Harry were recognized for their efforts in battling institutional racism as part of the wedding custom to bring brides good luck, the Duchess of Sussex first wore the ring in 2018 for her wedding reception. She did so as her, something blue. The Duchess's long, white Louis Vuitton dress at the award ceremony had similarities to Meghan's wedding gown, which was created by Claire Waite Keller. Meghan's personalized outfit, however, also seemed to fit the wedding theme. Both dresses have an off-the-shoulder neckline, sharp tailoring, and are floor-length with long sleeves. However, the dress worn this evening stands out because it has a thigh split down the middle. Meghan also has her engagement ring, which also has two diamonds from the Princess of Wales, which is another piece of jewellery she owns that was originally Princess Diana's. Kate Middleton now has Princess Diana's sapphire engagement ring, which Prince Harry actually inherited. Prince Harry donated the cherished ring to his brother, Prince William, so he could propose to Kate Middleton with it, said Maxwell Stone of renowned UK jeweller Stephen Stone. In an interview, Prince William previously remarked that he gave Kate Middleton the ring because it seemed pretty wonderful because obviously, she's not going to be around to join in the fun and thrill of it all. The Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Organization is honoring Prince Harry and Meghan Markle this evening, and they will both get awards, in recognition of their efforts on racial justice, mental health, and other social impact initiatives through their Archule Foundation. I was kind of amazed for them to come here and accomplish this, to face challenging situations in the press without having too much problem, said Alec Baldwin, who is hosting the awards presentation. There will inevitably be some challenges. One day after the release of the teaser for their Netflix documentary, which includes footage of Princess Diana being harassed by the press, the Duke and Duchess make an appearance. The latest teaser has voiceover work from Prince Harry in which he discusses the sorrow and suffering of women marrying into this institution, as well as footage of the late Princess of Wales, Kate Middleton, and Meghan Markle being pursued by the paparazzi. In the Netflix teaser, Prince Harry also appears to allude to Princess Diana's passing when she states, I was afraid. I didn't want events to be repeated. In another news. The Christmas issue of a glossy magazine features Queen Camilla. It was reported that Queen Camilla appeared on the Christmas cover of Good Housekeeping magazine as the publication celebrated its 100th anniversary. Today marks the glossy magazine's release, and Camilla is shown wearing a stunning holiday red dress. It also commemorated Camilla's mother-in-law, the late Queen Elizabeth II, who celebrated her Platinum Jubilee. In an exclusive interview, Camilla discussed her important work with the domestic violence organization Safe Lives and discussed some of her interactions with volunteers and survivors there. I genuinely believe that volunteers are this country's backbone and that they keep our communities together in a real and meaningful way, sometimes going unnoticed and unappreciated. I sincerely appreciate the optimism that our country's volunteers provide for each and every one of us. She stated, I have had the honor of meeting so many women, and men, who live in an environment of constant dread, therefore the work of safe lives is very dear to my heart. Their tales continue to trouble me. I keep hearing from survivors that they want the wall of silence to be shattered more than anything else. Without a doubt, spending time secretively and covertly with women, men, and kids who have survived abuse and are re-establishing their lives. Although their circumstances are always extremely traumatic, it is encouraging to see how strong they are as they face seemingly insurmountable challenges. Thanks.